All right, so let's come on board, let's come online as we're about to begin today's program. Maureen, good to see you. We're just almost about to start off. Victor, always a blessing to have you. Karibu sana. Remember, as you're tuning in or as you're coming online, just do me the favor of going ahead to share, start a watch party, tag a friend, share, start a watch party or tag a friend so that we could have as many people as we can just join in us and uh, in the next like 60 seconds we are going to be starting off so please let's just go ahead and set it off on course again as you are coming in marsh good to see you as you're coming in let me get to know where you're watching from it's 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 a blessing to know uh that you're joining us your comments will also be highly appreciated and your participation as the program goes ahead so that we can be able to be blessed together. So let's just keep on coming on board. Remember, tag a friend, share, start a watch party. It's a new month, and so we are trusting God for very many things as the Lord is helping us in the name of Jesus Christ. Grasha Kosge, you're welcome. You're welcome, you're welcome. Let's keep on tagging people. Let's keep on tagging people as we come online. Today will be an awesome day. We trust God something profound will take place and the word of the Lord will have a free course today in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen and amen. So once again, let me welcome you to Therapure, a program that we always host every Monday to Saturday at exactly 10 minutes past 12 East African time. My name is Reverend Pancras. Ngira, I'm the pastor of Word of Light Center uh, in the nation of Kenya, which is in East Africa. And I'm glad to have all of you joining me. I do trust that uh, your new month has begun well, and the past month was also uh, kind towards you. I know uh, many of you may have probably had testimonies, probably you even had a challenge, but there's a reason to still give thanks because it's breath on your nostrils. And today being the first of May, uh, even Labor Day, we are believing God that God will glorify himself. So let me say again, happy Labor Day and a happy new month to all of you that are joining me. Again, let me again welcome you to go ahead and take the liberty just to share or start a watch party uh, so that we would get as many people as we can on board, tag a friend. I want to speak a word today that would be able to give us a trajectory and direction for the month that we have just begun, even in the month of May. So I want us to pray as we start off, and then we will immediately get into the word of God right now. So Lord, we appreciate you that you have given us such a time as this. And we thank you that the word of God always has ability to help us to set course for every beginning that we ever have. We thank you for the month of April, and we thank you for the month of May that you've also given us, for what we saw in April, for what you did in April, for the miracles that we were able to witness, the breakthroughs that you were able to manifest in our lives. For <clears throat> that, Lord, we appreciate you. And more than anything, we thank you that a new season has now begun in the month of May, and we have been expecting many things that you will begin to do starting now. So we commit ourselves, and we commit those attached to us, and even commit the entire month and everything that we do into your hands. We are trusting you that this month of May will open up for us greater things more than we had ever thought. So Lord, we ask that you will cause this month uh, to have lines falling on pleasant places. Uh, Lord, you will enable this month to be redeemed from all evil in the name of Jesus. And we thank you that lines for us will fall on pleasant places. For indeed, we have a goodly heritage over this new month to the glory and to the praise of your name in Jesus' name. And everyone needs to shout a good amen and amen. All right, Jackie, good to see you. You're all welcome. Karibuni sana. I want us to go to the book of Daniel, chapter number 7. Daniel, chapter number 7. We are going to be reading verses number 17. Today, I want just to speak a word in view of the new month that we are entering into. What I'm going to be ministering will not be what I've covered over uh, the past few days. Uh, we were able to finish that yesterday. And by the way, I do trust that most of you that tuned in uh, throughout this entire week when we were dealing with restoration were blessed. I've had testimonies. Uh, yesterday, I had the privilege of even playing, praying for somebody at night. And God just aligned her bones and also her muscles. She had a major back problem, but there's a God who is able to bring things into order. And we thank God for miracles that have been able to start happening. So uh, I know that you have been blessed, and if in case you are just tuning in and you are not privileged to be watching the programs in the previous uh, days, that's over the past week up to you now. We are... uh, I'm sorry about that. I hope I'm, I'm back. I want to apologize. Uh, there was a bit of a network issue that actually took place. So I beg that you actually forgive me for that. 
So anyway, uh, we are back online and uh, I want to trust that we are going to have uh, a more awesome time. So uh, thank you for bearing with me. I had actually forgotten uh, to set up the Wi-Fi, so I had to again <laughs> make sure that it was put on. So now I'm in Daniel chapter number 4 and verse 17, and there's what I want to deal with. And I was saying that if in case you never had the privilege of being able to watch the program uh, the entire week on restoration, I would really encourage that you go ahead and you do so. Uh, but if you did, praise God. But you can go ahead and still watch it again. Uh, you can do this by going to YouTube and you could also do this uh, by also flipping and uh, checking it also uh, on Facebook Live on my page, Pastor Pancras and Gira. So I'm now in Daniel chapter 4. There's something I want to deal with which will just specifically cover today's topic. Uh, I want to speak on decrees and demands. Decrees and demands which will specifically be for today and what I'm about to minister on will focus on how we are going to redeem this entire month and trust God that this entire month will completely uh, take a shift and also advance us into the next level. So I'm in the book of Daniel chapter 4 and verse number 13. Now, if you're getting me, please Please let me get to know that you're getting me. You could just type somewhere. Jackie, let me get to know that we are there. Just type somewhere so that I can get to know uh, that we're still on. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. So verses number 17. The scripture says, this, is, this matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones. I'll repeat that again. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and give it to whomsoever he will and set it up over it the basest of men. Now, I want to speak on decrees and demands because there are a few things that I want you to understand whenever we actually begin a new season. Ephesians chapter number 5 and verse 16, there are statements that Paul makes in this particular scripture. When Paul speaks out, he says, redeeming the time, I'm using the King James translation, he says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. The word redeem there simply means to buy back. It also means to purchase. So which means there's a currency somebody can use to purchase time. There's a currency that somebody can use to purchase time. In the perception of many people, people tend to believe that only money is a currency. But I want you to understand that there are seven currencies in life. I'll just mention them in a hurry. And out of the seven of them, money is a least of all currencies. Money is not really the highest. It's a out the currencies is first currency uh, we usually know as what we consider as vision that is a currency Genesis 1 and verses number one the second currency uh, which we usually know as faith that's a currency the third currency is what we know as wisdom that's also a currency by itself because wisdom gives you the ability to know how to trade or advance matters the fourth currency that we observe in the Bible is a currency of giftings the giftings that God invests in a person whenever God gives you a gifting that by itself is a currency Currency. The fifth currency is what we know as favor or the blessing. Favor and the blessing or favor or the blessing. That by itself is a currency. There are things you can never be able to advance or to move or to purchase without favor. Favor gives you an added advantage. The sixth currency we have in life is property. Property is also a currency uh, by itself. And then we also have a good name as a currency, a good name as a currency. And then we have money. Money is the least of all currencies that all, all of you must actually get to understand. But I I want you to realize that whenever we study the scriptures, when Paul is saying redeem, which means to buy, and we are talking of buying using a different currency, it means that there are currencies we could utilize, and the currency we are talking about here is a currency of faith, which is born of God's word. Whenever we have a word and we start a new season, like we have now begun the month of May, the word that God avails is what we utilize to purchase or to redeem the month or the season we are actually jumping into. So when we are talking about redeeming the, day, the time because the days are evil, we are actually securing curing the days ahead of us from any evil that may try to raise its head against us as believers. And we do so by the currency of faith which is born of revelation or born of God's word. So I want you to remember that so that we can be able to build what we are actually building on as we continue. Now, in the book of Daniel chapter number 4 and verse 17 there are two words that are actually utilized that can be able to help us in redeeming or going ahead uh, to make the most of the seasons that we have entered and also uh, making our paths stay clear from any evil occurrences that can try to elevate itself. The first one we observe here is the word decree. And the second one we actually observe here is the word demand. Two 
very important words. Now you realize that when Daniel is speaking in Daniel 4 and verse 17, Daniel speaks about decrees of watchers and then he talks about demands made by the word of the holy ones. So decrees are made by watchers and demands are made by holy ones. Now both of those statements basically depict the saints or the believer. Now if you study the scripture from verses number 13, you will get to notice that he's actually talking of angelic beings. These are angelic beings. But also at the same time, going beyond angelic beings, also as believers, we have also been given the mandate to become watchers and we have also been called the holy ones according to scripture so it's not just tied down to what we consider as angelic beings but when you look at it also critically you will get to notice that it also speaks of what we consider as uh, what we call the saints or the believers so uh, the believers then have been given the right to make decrees and the believers have been given the right to make demands uh, in job chapter number 22 and verse 28 job 22 and verse 28 the bible says you will make a decree and it shall be done for you or it shall be established unto you so every believer has been called to make decrees and every believer has been called to make demands particularly when you begin a new season uh, begin a new season in the very beginning that's one of the mandate that God gives to you the second thing that you notice in this scripture is that the Bible explains that the living may know that the most high rules over the kingdom of men so for God to establish his rule in the affairs of men or in the kingdom of men or in the realm of humanity <clears throat> he can only do it when Saints make decrees and make demands so that means God can be limited I know that's a very strange statement that I've just stayed there said there but I want you to understand that God can actually be limited and the thing that limits God is when the believers do not pray many people always say that if God is God how can he allow all the evil to take place and the answer is very simple that Jesus actually had already established an order that the purpose of the Saints being on earth and the church being on earth is to be able to create a highway for the will and the purposes of God to be established on earth people that have been given to territorial right are human beings so on the terrain affair or the territorial affair we must understand that it is the human beings that have been given authority but because of the fallen nature we gave room to satanic forces to find opportunity now I want you to understand that spirits have no right to function on the human realm unless they are invited the only time spirits find an ability to function on the human realm is when they are invited on earth that's why uh, Satan had to find a way to deceive Adam and Eve and when Eve and Adam went ahead to acknowledge that it was Satan that caused it they passed the authority to him so when Jesus came Matthew chapter 28 and verses number 18 and he says all power and authority has been given to me he had recollected what the enemy had taken and then the Bible says he gave it uh, to the church so it is us who are the body of Christ that basically possess this authority but I want you to still remember the same Bible teaches us uh, when Paul speaks in 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 mentioning the God of this world and in the book of Ephesians chapter number 3 Paul again speaks of the chapter 2 rather Paul speaks of the prince of the air so whenever we talk of the God with a small g of this world that's 2nd Corinthians chapter number 4 and verse number 4 you must realize that Satan is a God of this world so he has manipulated the systems of the world to favor him and the way that he has manipulated the systems of the world to favor him is by influencing humanity and because of the fallen nature of man we have continually invited demonic forces to find expression on earth now I'll repeat again that human beings a human body this thing we call the body is what gives us right on the earthly realm spirits do not so for Jesus himself to deliver humanity he had to come through the womb of a woman walk through all legalities in order to find a right to be called the high priest that understands the feeling of our infirmities and had the right to deliver humanity from the grips of iniquity so I want you to always understand that if God came or Jesus decided to come riding on a horse to deliver humanity Satan would have had a right to go ahead and accuse God and say you have broken uh, the principle and the laws that govern life so he had to come Jesus had to come in the form of a human being and when he took the form of a human being he was able to find all rights that's why he told John the Baptist in Matthew chapter number three when John the Baptist was rejecting to baptize him he had to make it clear to him that you have to fulfill all righteousness so we have to follow due order that even though I'm about to begin my ministry I need another that has proceeded before me to release me into it and because John the Baptist was a predecessor the man that went before as a voice that spoke in the wilderness he was the one to release Jesus even into his ministry so Jesus followed due order and that's why he had all authority to deliver humanity so anyway I was mentioning all this to simply try and say that uh, the, in the human realm God has given us a right so when you see evil 
people on earth is because human beings have always set up altars which have permitted demonic forces to find opportunity or made demonic decrees or demonic transactions that have permitted room for all evil to go ahead and find expression on earth. So I want you to understand that these things can be put in order. So if you study the scripture, Jesus would say, pray like this, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come and thy will be done. So God's will, God's purposes find expression when a believer prays. The only time God's purposes find, now in God's sovereign will, he still has a right to do things in his sovereign will. But for God's purposes to still prevail on earth, God needs a human being on earth who will call on him in order for his purposes to find expression. That's why prayer is very critical. And that's why as we are beginning this new month, this is a very critical time. And that's why I'm teaching on decrees and demands as we are beginning a new month. Now, this program on Therapy for today will be slightly tilted and different, but it will arm you and it will help you as we are also going to pray at the end to make sure that from the month of May, this entire month, God is going to effect his will and his rule on the face of the earth. So let me repeat again Daniel chapter number 4 and verse 17. He says that this matter is by the decrees of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones. So we have established that they are watchers and they are holy ones who we now consider in the context of the saints. Now in this specific scripture of Daniel, it talks of angelic beings, but the saints are also watchers and the saints are also what we consider as holy ones. So we can also fit into this context. So we have established that we have been given the right to make decrees and demands when a new season comes in. Number two, the second thing we observe here, it says to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men. So the rule of God over the kingdom of men, over the affairs of humanity, finds expression when the saints take their position and they begin to make decrees and demands in the sphere. In the process of doing so, God finds expression. Remember again Job 22, 20, 28. He says, you shall make a decree and it shall be established unto you. If you read verse number 29, he says very clearly, and therefore shall the light arise and the path shall be made clear. If you continue, he says, when men will say there's a casting down, you will say there's a lifting up and God and God shall save the innocent. So God needs people on the earth realm to open up their mouth and make decrees. And as we are positioning ourselves, positioning ourselves through this therapy program on the 1st of May, we are trusting God that the utterances we are going to make will affect the trajectory of this nation, the trajectory of the atmosphere around us, the trajectory of our families, our businesses, our careers, our destinies, and also the nations at large. We can make a declaration and, and declaration and choose to decide that evil will no longer prevail, destinies will no longer be cut short, lives will no longer be affected by the decrees and the demands we are going to be making. I do hope you're understanding where I'm going to. Now, to understand decrees and demands, we, we will need to talk about what we call speakings of God. I really want you to stay with me so that you can understand what I'm going to be speaking today. To understand what we call decrees and demands, you must understand what we call the speakings of God. They are what we call speakings in the scripture. And if you study the Bible, there are actually six of them in number. So let me go through them very quickly, then I will zero in in the two of decrees and demands, and then we are going to do so. Again, let me ask you to go ahead, invite somebody, tag a friend if you can. Open up this thing and share uh, the link to other people so that somebody can also be blessed because we are in a very strategic timing right now and what the word that God has put in me will shift somebody's life permanently. So please tag a friend, share or even start a watch party as we are jumping into it. So they are what we call speakings of God. And these speakings in the Bible, if they are what we call speakings of God or what we call uh, divine speakings, these speakings command what we call uh, spiritual and also uncommon results. They command results and they are speaking. Now remember, the Bible says in John chapter number 1 and verses number 1, in the beginning, God, I mean in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now if you continue, it says that there is nothing that is, that is created, that was created without the Word, which means everything that will ever be existent is existent because of the speakings of God the speakings of God. So anything that we would want to create, if we align ourselves with God and engage the divine speakings, we will also enjoy the same. And as long as we are beginning the month of May, we can engage divine speakings and begin to enjoy uncommon results. So again, I want you
you to stay with me. So there are six of them in the scriptures. Number one is prayer. Prayer is a divine speaking. Prayer is a divine speaking. Now prayer is in two dimensions. The first one is that we speak with God. And the second one is we speak to God. All right. It's in two dimensions. If I would utilize that we speak with God and we speak to God. We speak with God, which talks about an aspect of a dialogue, an opportunity where we have conversation and fellowship with him so that God can be able to impact us. We speak to God so that God, so that we can be able to pour our petitions to him. The issues that we carry, prayer is one of the greatest places to offload burdens that you have and at the same time to receive burdens from the spirit of God. The more you keep on talking to him, the more he also translates you into his realm. The more you talk to him, more so like take things like speaking in tongues, you will find out that there's a translation that begins to happen in yourself. So prayer by itself is a divine speaking. You must always remember that whenever you pray a lot, you must know that you are engaged in a divine speaking. I can talk a lot about things like praying in tongues. Romans chapter number 8, number 8 and verses number 26. Romans 8, 26, the Bible says that therefore the Spirit of God knoweth our infirmities, our limitations. And when we do not know what, 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 what we ought to pray for, not how, but what we ought to pray for, the Bible says the Spirit of God maketh intercessions for us with groans that words cannot express. And verse 27 says that he that such as a mind of the maketh intercessions for the saints according to God's will. So I want you to remember that he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So stay with me. I'm taking you somewhere because I want to build up something in you. So prayer by itself is a divine speaking. When I pray a lot in tongues, I'm literally releasing the will of God. And the will of God then begins to shape my destiny, to shape my pathways. I receive the impartations of God. Verse 28 of Romans chapter number 8, the Bible says very clearly, if you read verse number 28, if you study, it says, and all things work together for the good of them that love God, even the called according to his purpose. Now I want you to take note of that scripture. You will notice that all things only work together, not only for those that love God and are called according to his purpose, those that were praying in the spirit. Verse 26. He says, the spirit of God knoweth our infirmities. So when I pray a lot in tongues, it's as though I begin to align my pathways and my destiny. That's the first divine speaking or the first God speaking that we have. Number two is prophecy. Prophecy is also a divine speaking or a God speaking. Now, this is very essential. Prophecy here, we are talking about speaking God's mind or God's will uh, in prediction of the future and speaking God's mind or God's will as it relates to a current situation. So, prophecy means that I'm predicting, I'm, I'm foretelling what is about to come and I'm also foretelling, which means I'm declaring God's mind or God's will in a current situation or a current setting. For example, when I'm talking about prediction, people like Prophet Agabus or even uh, prophet Eli Elijah when he prophesied concerning a coming uh, uh, what we call um, uh, what we call drought that would happen for three and a half years to Israel in the scripture in the book of first Kings chapter 17 you notice that when he spoke he it was supposed to give trajectory to the nation of Israel in order for them to repent it wasn't that God really wanted them to stay for three and a half years uh, in that problem you know one thing that we have to understand about the judgments of God the judgments of God were not designed to bring punishment on us and just to make us feel bad the judgments of God were designed to make men understand the value of righteousness. The book of Isaiah says that pour your judgments, O God, that men may learn righteousness. So the judgments of God were designed to tilt our hearts and our minds to recognize our need for God and our need to turn to repentance. So when Elijah prophesied and told the nation of Israel for three and a half years that was coming for drought, it was actually because of the worship of Baal and in a call for them to actually turn to God in repentance. And then we see Agabus in the New Testament and prophesying of an impending danger, a famine that is to come, and how the apostles took position and were able to go ahead and lead the church on how the church needed to go ahead and position themselves properly for how to handle, I'm sorry about that, how to handle the famine that was about to come. And you realize that because of the prophetic unction that actually lied in this man of God called Agabus, the church or the apostles were able to give direction on how to help the others survive. So prophecy is essential. It gives prediction of things to come, but prophecy is also forth telling which means to speak to a current situation which is actually prevailing ezekiel chapter 37 is a good example for this when ezekiel prophesied god commanded him prophesy to the dry bones and as he prophesied born came upon born and the bible says in a great army arose new came upon flesh came upon it an army arose out of it so sometimes we prophesy as a divine speaking to announce god's mind or will in a situation that we have actually been to so we need prophecies we need to learn 
learn to prophesy in every situation that we are in. The third speaking is blessing. I really want every one of you to stay with me. Please stay with me until everything is perfected as I'm talking because I'm targeting to finish with the decrees and demands. The third one is what we call blessing. Now, that word blessing in French, okay, is a word benedict, okay? It's to benedict. Uh, that word blessing is a word benedict which simply talks of good speaking or speaking correctly or speaking well. Uh, if you look at it in uh, the word curse, which is the opposite of the word blessing, is a word malediction. All right? Malediction. Male diction or malediction. Male diction or malediction, depending with how you want to pronounce it, which means to speak badly. But when I'm talking the blessing, what I'm doing is speaking what is right. I'm speaking words which generate uh, correct results. That's the word blessing. That's a divine speaking by itself when god created man one of the things that god made sure he did is that he blessed him he spoke words that were able to give man an inheritance of progress in his life when you notice that jacob and Esau were fighting they were not fighting for earthly or tangible things <clears throat> they were fighting for spiritual things and you will realize that jacob all he was advised by the mother is make sure that you receive the words of your father because he's about to give an inheritance to your brother and this inheritance somebody would have thought it was physical maybe properties and stuff like that it wasn't so it was a word and those words were enough to make jacob become what he was even up until today i want you to understand that you can have physical things but you can fail in life but if you have a spiritual release of a blessing over your head you will always generate what is physical Physical. The Bible says it is the blessing of God. Proverbs 10, 22. It is the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. So in the Jewish culture, one culture that they would always do is to bless their children. Whether somebody is turning to a certain age, if somebody is celebrating their birthday, it's their child, a child is turning 10 years of age, they would take the book of Psalms. I want you to listen to me carefully. They would look for Psalms chapter number 10 and the past, uh, the, uh, what we call the parents would begin to prophesy that particular scripture over the life of the child. Uh, whether the person is turning, uh, you know, 20 years of age, they would take Psalms 20 and begin to speak. According to their age, they would pick a Psalm and they would pick up the prophetic inclinations of that particular Psalm and declare it over the child. I want you to understand that the blessing is powerful. That's why when your pastor opens up themselves and begins to bless you, it's not something you should just be keeping quiet. You know, whenever you hear the blessing, there's a culture in scripture that teaches us in Nehemiah chapter number 8 and also when Jesus was ascending in the book of Matthew chapter number 28, he also did the same thing. Anytime the blessing is coming, there's a culture the Bible teaches us. He says they lifted up their hands. They stood up first of all, lifted up their hands. And when the blessing was uttered by the priest, they shouted, Amen. Amen means I am in agreement. If you notice in the book of Matthew 28, I hope I'm correct. Or is it Luke? Uh, Luke, I, I think chapter number uh, 22, somewhere there when Jesus was now ascending. The Bible says as he was ascending, he blessed his disciples while he was in the mount mountain. So you will notice in the blessing, there had to be a risk response so the blessing is also a divine speaking that's why you have to learn to bless your spouse if you look at proverbs chapter 31 uh, the bible says how the husband of the virtuous woman will arise and will declare you know i'm paraphrasing a blessing on her he, he will begin to speak him and the children and praise her and speak certain words to the woman these are things that men ought to understand husbands ought to understand to speak blessings to wife wives ought to understand to speak well to their husbands parents need to know how words are powerful over the life of their children and the words that they are speaking of blessing shape the destiny of their children concerning business people they need to know how to bless how you utter words matter it says for you have loved the curse the curse will come upon you for you have hated the blessing the blessing be far from you it's in the book of psalms i will give you the scripture later on for you have loved curses curses will come upon you and for you have hated the blessing the blessing will be far from you so you have to understand that the power of life and death is in your tongue and the speakings we have is what we call the blessing learn to bless your business bless your career pick up your cv even if you don't have a job every morning keep on speaking to your destiny command it and declare that you are blessed you will prosper you will go far things will work for you you are blessed in the city in the field blessing you're going in you're coming out i mean you're the head and not the tail above only and not beneath i mean you begin to declare that the work of your hands is blessed your head will never lack oil your eyes have ability to
to see. As you command the blessing, you will notice it begins to function in your life because a blessing is a powerful force. So that's the other thing that you have to understand. Number four, fourth divine speaking is what we actually consider as utterances. Utterances. Utterances are simply what we know as consistent speakings, okay? Or what we call words that are consistently spoken. Words that are consistently spoken. In Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2 and verse number 4, when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, and the Spirit of God gave them utterances. So these are words that you will notice that you continually speak. And the utterances that you make begin to shape your thinking and they also shape your destiny. Uh, the uniqueness about utterances, they are designed to bring a shaping. They are designed to shape you both internally and also shape your pathways. This is what we call uh, utterances. So utterances are made when people also speak a lot in tongues. So that's why I've read the book of Acts chapter number 2 and verse number 4. Utterances are made also when ministers are speaking the word of God. When you hear sermons, when pastors are preaching, Paul would say, pray for us that God would give us an open mouth and God would give us utterances. So in other words, Paul was basically saying that in our speakings, people's destinies would end up getting shaped. So every sermon basically comes to speak as an utterance to you. It shapes your thinking. It shapes your destiny. You may not be aware. That's why only daft people can sleep in church. Only fools will never hear someone properly. Any time that the word is actually coming over your life, it sanctifies you. It actually perfects you. It actually builds you up. Let me show you a scripture in Romans chapter number, uh, number 15 so that you'll be able to understand. Romans chapter number 15 and verses number 16. Go with me there and see the power <clears throat> of utterances. Then we will also go to Colossians chapter 1 and verses number 16. So I'll say again, utterances can be in speaking in time when you're praying also declarations constant words that you're speaking but also utterances majorly come through sermons when words of, of ministers when pastors and ministers are speaking over your head something happens to you your life and destiny begins to align your thinking begins to change have you ever noticed that one of the greatest battle you will ever have in listening to a sermon is concentration and that's why you have to allow your spirit to develop capacity and create within your mind the focus you need to you will notice that there's no word that can impact your spirit without it finding fast access through your mind. If it does not intrigue you, it cannot impact your heart. If it doesn't intrigue your head, it will never find access to impacting your heart. So for it to find access and to bring the impact it ought to, there must be, first of all, a mind acceptance. The moment that exactly happens, then you will notice your heart immediately finds a full impartation, and that is where results can actually be birthed. So that's why there are battles. Birds of the air can come in churches. That's why we have to do intercession. Praise and worship has to be done so that people People can be prepared enough to receive what God has to utter. So listen to this scripture in Romans chapter 15 and verse 16. Paul is speaking. He says that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. I'm reading the King James translation. I want to repeat that scripture again. I'm in Romans 15 and verse 16 that i that i should be a minister of jesus christ to the gentiles ministering the gospel of god that the offering up of the gentiles might be acceptable being sanctified by the holy ghost now what paul is saying is that as i am preaching to them they are actually being sanctified so every time a minister is preaching i want you to realize that every time they are preaching they are actually offering you up as a sacrifice unto god and it must be acceptable that's why i preach I cannot preach what he thinks or what he finds to be good or the latest revelation he has. He has to preach what is acceptable to God. And as he's doing so, to the people that are receiving, they may not be aware, but they are actually being offered unto God as a living sacrifice. So always learn to focus when the word is going on. And even peradventure, you are affected. Learn to listen to it over and over because it's a destiny exchange that is actually happening at that particular time. So I want you to notice that the speakings of the word have an impact in your soul something happens to you when the word of God comes the utterances now let me not dwell there I want us to go to the next one which is now what I wanted to focus on demands and decrees so demands is the fifth one and decrees is the sixth one so let's quickly wrap it up and so that we can be able to understand so what is a demand and what is a decree let's start by actually talking about a demand as one of the utterances that we have a demand is known as a judicial decision or mandate whenever we are talking about demand there if you check it out in the Hebrew translation in the book 
of Daniel chapter 4, a demand is simply a judicial decision or a mandate. Now, this simply means, whenever we are talking of a demand, that this is when one has evidence of what, or, or facts of what they actually want. It is when one has evidence or facts of what exactly they want. So that means a person that makes a demand is a person that has entered into faith. All right? A person that has already entered into faith. So what is faith? Hebrews chapter 11 and verses number 1. Hebrews 11 and verse number 1. The Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. Now if you take me to your own property, you know, uh, you're taking me to your own property, your land, and you're telling me, Pastor, this is my land. And uh, the moment you're telling me that, I might be intrigued. I will be moved that it is your land. But the time you will fully convince me it is yours is when I see your papers. The moment I see your title, deed, then I will know it is indeed your property. Because showing me physically doesn't exactly mean it is yours. You may even not take me to show me physically, but if you remove the original title deed and you show me that title deed without me going to see your property, I will indeed believe that you have a property. Now that is faith. Faith is that evidence. Faith is that substance. The Bible says now faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. So I want you to understand that when we are actually talking <coughs> of faith and we are talking of, uh, I mean, when we are talking of faith, we are actually saying that faith gives you evidences. And the evidence here is God's word, that that word must be specific. It cannot be general. It can't be general. It must be a rhema to you. It must be specific. It must be something that now enters you as a rhema. You must come into what we call a word encounter. So you must have a truth encounter that whatever you actually uh, have been believing God for, a revelation that you got in scripture now be became personal, not general, personal to you. Now that is what now gives you the platform of making what we consider as demands. Remember, a demand is a judicial decision or mandate, which means that one has the evidence or the facts in order for them to place a request or to place a demand. So that's when now a person can go ahead to make a demand. So when we are talking of demands, it is a word God is speaking to you on a personal level. That word that your spirit has captured concerning a season, a time, concerning a thing that you're trusting him for, when that word is in you, then immediately you can place demands in the spirit. Go with me to Romans chapter number four. Man, I'm getting excited myself with this word. Can you imagine a preacher who is happy about what he's preaching? He himself is excited. I'm so excited. I feel like I want to jump. I would have even given an offering just for this word I'm preaching. I'm so blessed. God is even speaking to me personally. Now, Romans chapter number four. Look at verse 17. And then we are going to just look at the scriptures up until verse number 21. Now, this is concerning Abraham, Romans four. Now, we are talking of demands. <clears throat> and that's what I want to teach you because when we will begin to place demands concerning the month of May, we will place the demands on the evidences of God's word. So that by this, remember the book of Isaiah says, God is speaking. He says, come, bring your strong reasons to me. He says, come, bring your strong. You know, in chapter one, he says, come, let us reason together. Now, you know, one thing I want you to understand when a person says, let us reason together, you must understand that fool, you can't, a wise man can never reason with a fool. <laughs> you, you always have to learn that. Never try to uh, attempt to reason with a fool because you will come out, it will come out badly. You will look like a fool yourself. So the best thing that you do is that a man who is wise always reasons with a wise man. You leave a fool to reason with another fool. But if you ever want to reason, you reason with somebody on the same class that you're in. So when the Bible says, come, let us reason together, God is telling you, you have to have entered my class. If you want to reason with me, there must be something that causes you to think like I am thinking. So in the same book of Isaiah, he says, bring forth your strong reasons and bring your arguments to me. So the only way you have the strong reasons is on God's words. Now on that platform, you can place demand on God. Now look at Abraham, verse 17 of Romans chapter 4. As it is written, I have made thee the father of many nations before him, whom he believed. Even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. That's a God we are serving. That even though things are dead, God can quicken them and we call them as though they are. And the Bible says in verse number 8, number eight as though they were, not even are, as though they were. Verse 18, who againest hope, believed in hope, this is Abraham, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. He believed. Against hope, he believed in hope. Can you imagine that? That's a very contradicting statement. Verse number 19. And being not weak in faith, he considered not. Look at that. He considered not the deadness, okay? And he considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years of age, hundred years old, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. 
Abraham completely had translated. He did not consider that he was old. Never consider that his wife is old. According to the word he had received, he was now actually young, according to scripture. Verse 20, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Look at verse 21. And being fully persuaded that that, I mean, that what he had promised, he was able to perform. This man was translated. He had entered into a position of faith that could place demand on God. I want you to understand that you can make demands. You can. You can make demands. You can make demands in the spirit. You can make demands and angels will listen. You can make demands and the hand of God will begin to move. They are those that God has positioned. The moment they begin to place demands in the spirit, by their insistence, God works in a very supernatural way. There are people that can just make a demand. God, I demand your help. And you will notice such people, they may not take long before they begin to see answers because their demands are on course. Now remember, a demand is a judicial decision. So look at the book of Luke chapter number 18 from verse number 1 to verse number 10. Luke 18 verse 1 to verse 10. See the scriptures and how Jesus gives a parable. Jesus begins by saying men ought to pray and not to faint. So he's teaching us on prayer. And then he goes ahead to give a parable concerning a widow who went to a king that did not fear God, neither <laughs> did the king respect man. Those are the worst characters in a human being that can ever that you can ever deal with. A man that fears not God, neither respects man. Such a person can easily kill you, and they will not feel anything. But the Bible says the widow had pressed this king. The widow kept on going persistently, and the widow kept on demanding, avenge me of my enemies. Avenge me of my enemies. Now what the widow knew is that the king was given a right to make sure he exercises judgment to those that were out of order so the, the widow was placing demand on the office of the king irrespective of his character the widow decided to ignore that what the widow knew is the office must work on my behalf and placed a demand until the bible says the king said give to the widow whatever she wants lest she wears my soul and then now jesus goes ahead to say will not therefore god also quickly avenge his own who cry to him day and night so God is in a hurry to also do the same. So Jesus giving us that analogy is simply trying to tell us that there are demands you can place on God. Not necessarily on any other reason, but on the platform of his judgments. And you can go ahead and ask him, God, remember, remember your word. The moment you place demands on such, it moves the hand of God to go ahead and perform. One of the things about many believers is that we are very weak in the aspect of placing demands. So heaven is always weak in responding on our behalf. So when God wants to answer, he realizes people do not know how to place demands on him the moment you understand the power of demand god will automatically move because now he realizes your reasoning is like that of a lawyer who knows you have approached him as a judge and a father that is willing to respond but he wants you to deal with him in an intelligent way in prayer please i want you to understand that we can place demand we can place demand we can place demand we can put it on the kingship of our god and the moment we go ahead and place demand on that pedestal god God will begin to move just the same way the widow was dealing with a man that has not fear God neither had respect of man but the widow knew what I've come to deal with here is his office not his character I don't care what man of money is what I need you is to you must bring to me justice work on my behalf and God looked and Jesus had to use that story to teach us a lesson of how powerful God can be able to answer when people understand the power of demand look at Isaiah chapter 45 in verses number 11 isaiah 45 and verse number 11 now in isaiah chapter number 45 and verse number 11 the bible says uh if you study it concerning the things to come isaiah is giving a prophecy concerning things to come isaiah tells them that ask of me he's actually giving a prophecy from god but concerning the work of my hands or concerning my works, isaiah says go ahead and demand me okay go ahead and command concerning the work of my hands command ye me so there are things that god expects you to learn to command and there are things that you have to realize that the moment you go ahead and you begin to place demands god will never be angry at you god doesn't become angry because you place demands you know some people tend to think that whenever we approach god we have to go with this tender character oh god oh god again i'm here please oh god please please if you, you just love me just show me must there's a side you can plead yes but you must understand there's a place where god expects you to have some maturity that in the spirit you now understand the power of demand first corinthians chapter number six and verses number one look at the scripture do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? 
and if the world shall be judged by you are you unworthy to judge the smallest things look at that he says do you not know that the saints will judge so in other words know your position and when you understand your position then begin to know how to play certain demands in the spirit and you will begin to see results that will begin to respond to you i trust that you're getting something out of this you know out of the two children and when we talk about the prodigal son and people always criticize the prodigal son they say oh he was an unruly son we preach a lot about this guy but there's one thing that you must understand when he came back ask yourself the question why didn't the father attack him now, even before that, ask yourself the question, when he asked the father to give him his inheritance, I mean, how do you ask for your inheritance and your father is still alive? It, the inheritance is only distributed after the one that actually has it is already dead. That's one. Two, I mean, by the time he was asking the father, why wasn't the father angry at him? The father just went ahead and gave it to him. And that's the second thing. The third one is when he came back, did you see the father being angry? He said, hey beat the man in fact it was a son who was disturbed saying father forgive me for i have sinned it was good to have such a status but i want you to understand that the father was not even interested in that the father may have seen his heart but the father was interested that the son had come back in his placement now you must understand had the son asked for his inheritance and stayed in the same place the son would have progressed he would not be prodigal the only thing that made him lose his inheritance is that he demanded it and then he left to squander it in an environment that had no grace to preserve it and that's what we must understand that god is never perturbed if we place demand for the blessing you know there are perceptions in people that i know maybe i will drive 10 years from now i know maybe i will fly two years from now i know maybe the first time i will have land i will get it after this period of time i know god will answer me in the future i know god will do the miracle in the future that is nonsense in the kingdom place demand the son asked the father give me my inheritance when the elderly son came to the father and said how can you host a party for this one and yet i'm the one who has suffered together with you here that was a religious statement and that is when the father told him you are always with me and have everything you ever need in other words if you wanted a party <laughs> you would be enjoying it every day and if you also wanted your property you would have had it. the problem with you is that you're too religious you are in it but you don't want to demand it beloved listen to me demand you can drive when you want you can have healing when you want. You can have peace when you want. You can have open doors when you want. Don't throw it in the future. Don't have this mindset. The Bible does not say tomorrow faith. The Bible says now faith is. If there's one teaching I remember I preached some years ago is on what we call the now factor of faith. And I told people, faith is a now affair. Faith has nothing to do with the future. The moment you deal with faith, faith takes the future and conceives it in the now and bats it right now. In fact, let me make it worse. The future has nothing to do with tomorrow. The future is always with you right now. I'll repeat that again. The future has nothing to do with tomorrow. The future is always with you now. So what you always do is that every day you are actually living the future or manifesting the future. So the moment you come into revelation of your destiny, what you just do is constantly manifest it. That's what the Bible will talk about. Work out your salvation. Constantly manifest it. Constantly manifest it. When you do that, you will notice that now you are actually bathing it. Now that is why the Bible says now faith is. The moment you understand that concept, then it places you on the pedestal of demand. Now remember, I'm teaching on demands and decrees. And as we begin the new month, we can begin to place demands. Any prophetic word that was released over your head let's demand that it comes to pass the, the spirit of delay should not be discussed in this matter any uh, promise that you know very well you can tell within your heart that the month of may should be a month of answers for several things in your life let's go ahead and agree that we will place demands and god will begin to make it to come into a reality whatever it is god can do it in the now time don't throw it into the future he says concerning my works command him me god is ready he says whatever you not me in heaven whatever you bind on earth it shall be bound in heaven whatever you lose on earth god says i'm ready to do it if you do it as long as you believe it and act on it i'm ready to go ahead and also act on it he says ask and you shall receive it doesn't say plead for he says ask asking is asking if you need it ask it he says knock and it shall be open so if you ask and it did not happen go ahead and knock he says seek and you will find in other words god is simply trying to give you faces of demand please demand and today we are going to place demand because there's a god who is willing to go ahead and answer i hope you're getting something now let's go now to the book i mean let's now look at decrees rather let's now look at decrees so we've been able to explain what demands are demands are simply judicial decisions or mandates 
And this can only be made when people have evidences of facts of what they want. They are only made when people have evidences of facts of what they want. And we've been able to understand that these evidences are evidences by faith, by the word that is given to you. The prophecies that you know hang over your head. As long as you know them, you wage war with them. If you can feel within your spirit that enough is enough for you to be single, the time to get married within your heart. I'm not talking of you just wanting to get married because you want a husband to fulfill your own lust and stuff like that. Or you want a wife to fulfill. I'm not talking of that nonsense. But you can tell in the spirit your season shifted. You can tell in your heart that the season for you to enter something in terms of marriage, enter dimension in terms of wealth, enter dimension in terms of rest. You can tell that God has already brought it. Now in the spirit world, you begin to demand it. Because you, have, you can tell seasons have shifted. And let me say this to each one of you that is watching me and that has been an ardent follower of Therapua. If there's anything I want to let you know, I've been preaching this even in Word of Light over lunch hours here. I've been telling people, even my leaders, I told them the other day, I had a very strong sensation that there are very many things God had been doing from January to April, positioning people for what now he wants to release and a new move that God wants to release from this month of May. So we can place demands. So let's look at decrees. Let's look at decrees very quickly so that we can close it here. What's a decree? A decree is an official edict, an official edict, an official order, an official command. All right? An official edict, an official order, and an official command that is issued by a king. Now, you cannot make a decree without being in the posture of a king. Please remember that. You cannot make a decree without being in the posture of a king. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verses number 4. The Bible says, where the word of the king is, there is power. You cannot make a decree without being in the posture or the position of a king. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Who then can oppose it? So when a king speaks, you cannot reverse it. You must understand decrees can never be reversed. When they are uttered, they have no reverse gears. It just must come to pass. So in the book of Esther, for example, when the king had made a decree because of the deception of a man called Haman, and then Esther came to intervene and Mordecai, the only thing that the king could tell them is that I will write another decree higher than the first one I wrote in order to oppose the current decree that was there. In other words, when decrees are released, you can't reverse them. The only way you deal with decrees is to bring a higher decree that overrides or overrules the one that was actually existing right there. Now that's one thing you have to remember. Second remember i said that whenever you have actually made a decree you only make it on the posture of a king now i want you to understand that in the perspective of a believer they are you are a son when you got born again uh, john 1 in verse number 12 you are also a servant also remember that or a born slave uh, if you study the scriptures you will see that and also besides that you must realize you are also a king you are also a king so not only are you a servant of god or a slave of god you must understand it's scriptural but paul talks of born slaves and peter talks of the same of born servants okay they are dimensions of serving god all right and then you are also a son uh, so there's a relationship between you and god but you're also a king uh, revelations 1 and verse 11 of uh, verse 5 teaches us so uh, that we are kings and priests under god so always remember you are a king so when you understand that then it means that you've been given the right to make official edicts official orders official commands it has been put in you to go ahead and place such decrees I want you to remember that so that now when you will open your mouth, you will not open it carelessly. You will use it to shape destiny and move things in a dimension you have never seen. Now, please understand the power of a decree is in four levels. When we make a decree, number one, the power of a decree is that a decree builds. Anytime a decree is released, building manifests right there. People are able to build destinies, build lives, and are able to shape whatever they desire. You can study the scriptures in Ezra 5 and verses number 13 and verse 17. Ezra 5, 13 and 17. When decrees are made, there is power to build. So if people were weak, they couldn't build as they wanted to build. A decree releases a grace to go ahead and to build. All right. Uh, number two, decree also causes judgments to begin to rise against whatever stood against you. So judgments begin to rise. It judges forces that were rising against you. Ezra chapter 6 and verse number 11. Ezra 6 and verse 11 shows us that. So when a decree is made, the judgments of God 
God are made available and any force that is lifted against you is automatically brought into judgment. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. I studied, I was actually reading the book of Matthew chapter 16 and verses number 19. Matthew 16, 19. And also remember Ezra 6 and verse 11. So when a decree is made, judgments against enemies are released. Number three, when decrees are made, speed is executed. When decrees are made, speed is executed. In Ezra 6 and verse number 12, Ezra 6 and verse number 12, there was a decree that was made and the king made the decree and insisted that it had to be executed with speed. Decrees release speed. Decrees cause things to manifest in a hurry. Job chapter number 22 and verse number 28. Thou shall decree a thing and it shall be done. It shall be done and light shall arise. So you must understand when decrees are made, there is speed. Things are quickened. That's why we want to make decrees as we will come to a close. If you're blessed, let me just get an amen as you type it somewhere so that I know we are together. Personally, I am. So let me get an amen to know that we are together. Number four, when decrees are made, they cannot be stopped. They can't be hindered. They cannot be stopped. Anytime a decree has been made, it overrides. It just simply goes and its power of execution is made available. Esther chapter number 8, verses 5 and verses to verse number 8. Esther chapter number 8, verse 5 to verse number 8 and also verses number 17. When a decree is made, it it superrides every other thing. Now remember I said uh, that sometimes when a decree is made and it was wrong, it takes another superior one to come to override the one that was there. Now, I've taken time to teach you on divine speakings. Uh, I've given you six of them. I've been able to tell you prayer is a divine speaking. I've been able to tell you utterances are divine speakings. Prophecies are divine speaking. You must learn to prophesy. Blessings are divine speakings. You must learn to open your mouth and also declare blessings. But the two other speakings which are the core ones that we are looking at is what we have called demands and also what we have called decrees. Now I've built all this. If you came in late, well, you have the privilege of watching it again. We had a bit of intrusion in the beginning, but just go ahead and watch it from the beginning. And I read all this from the book of Daniel chapter 4 and verse 17. The Bible says again in Daniel 4, 17, the this matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand of the word of the holy ones that the living may know that the most high rules over the kingdom of men so i want you to understand that the kingdom of men the destinies of people your pathways everything concerning you can be affected by decrees and demands and remember, God himself moves according to the decrees and demands that we also are able to make. So I've taken time to teach you. I've even taught you quite a lot. I think I've expended a lot. I think most of you have benefited from this particular lesson. So I want us to now go ahead and make decrees just for a short while. If you're with me, I want you to join me and we just make some decrees. Let's just use about one or two minutes. We have begun the month of May. That's why this word has actually come our way. So I want us to go ahead and make some decrees. If you could join me, I I want you first of all just open your mouth pray in the spirit if you can in the name of jesus if you can't pray in tongues just give thanks for the new season that we are actually in right now open your mouth and just go ahead and give thanks in the name of jesus we appreciate you father for the month of april we thank you that you are our health you are our strength you are with us oh god we thank you that you have been able to empower us you preserved us in the month of uh, uh, april you kept our families our family members we would have given up we would have uh, god lost hope we would have not been where we are today had it not been for your help but thank you that you've been with us thank you for the progress we made over that period of time thank you for the doors that you opened over that period of time for the answers that you brought about to the prayers we made thank you for the results for father for for the strength you availed to our family members for our children for our husbands for our wives we appreciate you i want you now to open your mouth go ahead and begin to speak over the month of may and begin to declare some decrees right now open your mouth and just begin to declare make some declarations declarations and decrees are the same thing just open your mouth place some demand over prophecies that you know you had over your head go ahead and place some demands just join me and let's do this in the name of jesus christ so father i pray in the name of jesus placing demand every prophetic word you have been speaking concerning the year 2021 over my head over this season that we have entered in the month of may i pray that it prevails and it becomes flesh and comes to pass over my life in the mighty name of jesus i decree that god by the power of your word the power
pathways ahead of me are made straight. I thank you mountains are cut low, valleys are filled in the name of Jesus. The heavens are open over my head. I thank you that you're positioning my helpers day by day that there will be many as an army of God in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree that in the name of Jesus the help of God will be rendered to me. The freshness of the spirit will be upon me. My head will not know oil. My hands will be sufficient. Somebody just open your mouth. Make some decrees right now. I declare that God there will be overflowing abundance in my life that I will have sufficient to abound in every good work. For God you will cause great grace and grace to abound toward me. Make me oh God I pray sufficient in all things and I declare that I will have sufficiency to abound in every good work. I want you to make some decrees. Open your mouth and declare strength in your health. Declare that the Lord will preserve you. Declare that the favor of God will be evident in your life. Just open your mouth and make those decrees. Today we have been learning on decrees and demands. Open your mouth make some decrees in the mighty name of Jesus. We command in Jesus name that doors of greatness great and effectual doors are open before us. Father thank you that mighty God you are releasing the wave of salvation that we ought to see. I declare a season of salvation of souls. Salvation of souls. Salvation of souls. As a minister of the gospel I decree that God many of them that will give themselves to you. Many of them that will surrender their lives to you. I decree in the name of Jesus that God your work will expand. Your work will expand. Lord I decree an increase of influence. I decree an increase of open doors. I decree the favor of God. I decree the blessing of God. I declare Jesus Christ that life will become my portion in the name of Jesus that all that are connected to me will enjoy the same life. I declare restoration. I declare victory in the mighty name of Jesus and thank you our father for Lord you have heard this prayer in the mighty and holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. I know some of you may have just joined us. I just want to make some declaration as I close in the name of Jesus. May the hand of the Lord never fail in your life. May the Lord enlarge your territory. May he increase your influence. May your doors be open and be open wide. May your head never lack oil. May your eyes be clear in their vision. May the Lord order your steps and cause your feet to be dipped in oil. You will live and not die. Your hands will be sufficient for you. As your days are, so shall your strength be. I declare your helpers will not be few. There will be many. I declare the Lord brings you to your people. I say to you, every evil that you ever knew, you are delivered from it in the name of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Your ears shall be open to hear his voice. And you will hear a voice telling you this is the way that you should go. I declare that affliction in your life will not rise again a second time. I shut the door to every affliction and evil. I declare it stopped in May. It stopped in April. And the month of May is the beginning of newness for you, for your family, and for all that are connected to you. I declare that for all that are trusting God for opportunities, as I raise my hands now, may God open your doors. Today in Jesus' name, those that are jobless receive opportunities that will pay you for every time that you ever wept and ever cried. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I command promotions to come to those that have been working for years and have never seen an upgrade. I declare in the name of Jesus that the Lord gives you properties. Properties that you have sweated and trusted him for. I declare that God enables you to build and to finish what you are actually doing. I speak peace to your marriage. Peace to your marriage. I speak peace to your health. I decree that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your business shall prosper. Whatever you lay your hands to do, the blessing of God will be evident upon it in the precious name of Jesus. I declare to you, your paths are enlarged, your feet will not sleep. I command your visions to be clear in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May you see answers to your prayer for this season. You will have entered a fruitful season and so shall it be that in the month of may you will enjoy all that heaven has ordained and purpose for you too in the name of god the father the son and the holy spirit if you receive it can i see a typing of amen right there amen and amen and amen wow praise god praise god praise god you know today i feel like virtue again left me like yesterday and i feel that many of you the lord has already answered many things so we thank god for the month of May. We thank God for the month of May. Like I said, what I was ministering today, I'm not spilling it over to next week. God gave me a word. Next week I will be speaking on entering into rest. Entering into rest. 
That's what I'll be dealing with. And we will see rest in your health, rest in all areas. And we'll be looking at this, dealing with it from the book of First Peter chapter 5 and verses number 10. So we will deal with that next week. But for today, I've just been dealing, because it's a new month, uh, the focus that God put in my spirit is to deal with decrees and demands. Are you blessed? If you are, let me hear a shout of amen. Praise God. So I pray that the Lord keep you. The Lord bless you. Cause his face to shine upon you. Expand you. And God answer you. Thank you all for joining me again. I love you all in the name of Jesus. Please again, find opportunity to communicate any offering if you want to. The, the necessary numbers are there if you need to. A apart from that, one thing that I really wanted to emphasize, that number, I wanted people to take advantage of devotionals that I've made available. They are daily devotionals God has given me to do. I've been doing this from the year 2018. Uh, I started with hard copies and then I moved into 2019 into soft, co soft, co soft copies, uh, which I've been doing. We have over 2,000 subscribers across nations and it's a free devotional that people receive on WhatsApp and even Facebook but majorly on WhatsApp you receive it personally uh, as long as you have the numbers that are posted there uh, those numbers are available you can be able to get them and when you get it you just send me a message on WhatsApp send me a message on WhatsApp from there I will uh, you have to indicate your interest of receiving the devotional and also your name and immediately I will answer you and I will begin to put you on a broadcast and you will start receiving the devotionals so please take advantage of these materials and I trust that they will bless you uh, if you also want to get them on Facebook you can like the page uh, Daily Kingdom Devotional. There's a page on Facebook which I have called Daily Kingdom Devotional. Just go like it and you will start receiving the devotionals. But on WhatsApp, it gives you opportunity to also uh, ask me questions if need to, if need be, uh, communicate with me in case of any prayer issue and we agree. Let me tell you through this devotional I've seen many people get born again, some of whom I've never known. They were just introduced to it and they called me from different towns, different places. Uh, some rededicated their lives to God. Some actually got born again. I've seen people get filled with the Holy Ghost through this daily devotional. I mean, I'm telling you that. People getting filled with the Holy Ghost. People have gotten healed through this daily devotional. There's been reconciliation. Uh, I've seen God do quite a lot. So I want you to take advantage. You can be using it as a word for each day. It will help you in your Bible study. Even in your family altar, you can also go ahead and utilize it. And I trust you will be blessed. So take advantage. Those numbers are actually available there. I've uh, been able to post it. Take advantage of that. Send me uh, an, an interest. But remember to save my number so that you can be receiving them. Many people have these devotionals across the nations. So God bless you. I trust that we will meet on Monday as we go deeper to deal with God's word in Jesus' precious name. Amen.